Imagine being constantly asked by strangers, what are you, as if your very existence isn't valid until you can be properly categorized within a particular ethnicity and racial identity. Of course, many people don't need to imagine this because it's a daily reality. I've had friends who've described to me this experience where one friend has told me about how when she was growing up and when meeting a white British person for the first time, she grew to recognize the look of surprise on their face when she opened her mouth and an English accent came out. And another friend has told me about how she is frequently asked the question, where are you from? And when she answers Birmingham, they will have a follow-up question of, no, where are you really from? In If I Survive You by Jonathan Escoffrey, which is his debut book of fiction, uh, it opens with a story called In Flux, which vividly conveys the demoralizing and exhausting experience of a boy named Trelawney growing up in America and being constantly quizzed about this. And it's especially frustrating for him because he doesn't know the correct answer since his skin tone and accent don't fit into any one group or people's common conceptions about individuals from his background and neither his family or friends or a blood test are able to provide a definitive answer to this question. There's a real sharp-toothed wit to this story, but it's also filled with tremendous feeling. The story reveals the truth of his experience using the second person, so speaking to you, and this develops a number of layers where it's the author speaking to you, the reader, but it's also the character character speaking to himself. In doing so, it's as if Trelawney is condemned to not only be plagued by this question, but to internalize it and turn it outward. Though this book branches out to sympathetically portray other members of his family, it's bookended in this viewpoint and rooted in his experience. Family dramas often involve siblings battling for favor and the inheritance of property, but this book gives such a uniquely structured and personal view of one such struggle. It revolves around Jamaicans Topper and Sonia, who moved to Miami in the late 1970s and eventually build their own home and give birth to their sons, Delano and Trelawney. However, the lives of these characters are related in pieces, showing how their experiences and perspectives leave them physically and psychologically distant from one another. It also builds a larger plot concerning Patriarch Topper's dream house, which is plagued by hurricane conditions, subsidence issues, and an ackee tree whose growth is stunted by his axe-wielding progeny. Along the way, it traces Trelawney's pressing economic struggles as he lives out of his car and he finds various forms of work such as teaching or raising the rent for elderly individuals in subsidized senior housing or catering to the masochistic and narcissistic fetishes of people he connects with in personal ads. The struggle for money and acceptance often leads to exploitation and violence. It's impactful how these stories show the barefaced reality of racism, which is something that can be weaponized in plays for power, while the lived experience of it must be passively accepted. In consciously choosing not to write a more traditionally structured, linear tale told by a single voice, Escoffrey allows the reader to build 
builds a larger story and meaning. And I understand why some readers find it an uneven book because being offered such slivers can feel jarring and not all of the sections have the same powerful effect. But personally, I enjoyed following the surprising pathways that this fiction takes in exploring a variety of points of view and the growing tension between these family members. Individual characters often fail to understand the challenges and disappointments that the others face, and this often leads to conflict. I only wish there had been a story focusing on the mother, Sonia, whose progression we learn about in bits and pieces, but it would have been interesting to get her own point of view and how she is also unaware of aspects of her family's experience, such as Trelawney's desperate circumstances, which he conceals from her. However, it makes sense that this series of interconnected short stories focuses on Trelawney himself as he really feels like the heart of the book. And though he's a very sympathetic character, he has his own shortcomings and prejudices. There are also a number of peripheral characters whose fleeting presence is very distinct and memorable. Together, these stories build to a larger portrait of a unique multicultural landscape at a particular time. Though oppressive issues weigh heavily upon the inhabitants' daily lives, survival is achieved through cunning, compromise, and a wry sense of humor. I really enjoyed reading this book. I think it's a very distinctive and refreshing new voice in fiction. I would love to know if you're interested in reading this book now, or if you have read it, let me know what you think about it in the comments. I've seen very different opinions about this book, so it's really interesting to discuss and debate about it. I hope you're doing well and reading good things, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.